Elite design, better comfort, more grip. Our new Pure Grip Socks Elite add engineered compression, an anti-blister base, and more grip to keep you locked in. Available now at puregripsocks.com. While they haven't been relevant for quite some time, if you were into football boots in the 90s through the mid 2000s, then it's quite possible that Diodora holds a very special place in your heart. I know it does for me. With their latest model being a callback to what I would argue are some of the craziest football boots they ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the brand new Diodora Maximus Elite ITAT SLX, the top of the line, most expensive, made in Italy variation of what is effectively the return of the Maximus in very clearly Roma inspired colors, paying tribute to the 2006 Maximus as worn by Francesco Totti, whose name I'm sure I've mispronounced in a way that will offend at least one person on the internet. If that's you, I'm sorry. With the 2006 version of the Maximus being one of the most tech forward football boots possibly of all time, still having that full kangaroo leather upper, but having spring loaded studs, something that you will not find on the 2024 variation. However, the styling, the padded leather upper, and the sole plate stud pattern design as a whole definitely doesn't stray too far away from what made the Maximus unique in the first place. Where once upon a time, the Maximus series was known for its progressive high-tech design concept, the return of the Maximus definitely trends more towards the old school side of things, which of course calls into question, can these perform to the same level as other top end options, especially considering their $280 price tag. Because for that kind of money, you can buy almost anything else. That's exactly the question that I hope to answer for you in today's video as we go over all the details of the new Maximus, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet, and ultimately conclude how they stack up against alternative options in what is the constantly shrinking category of natural leather upper football boots. So if you're interested in learning more please stick around and if you are interested in a pair for yourself you can pick them up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive sr4u coupon codes by checking out the first link down below and as always if you guys enjoy the unsugar-coated brutally honest reviews on this channel don't forget to drop a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots of 2024 so first things first i want to address a couple things that you definitely should know if these are at all of interest to you and unfortunately there are going to be things that I think a lot of people will actually be pretty upset about. The first of which is the price tag. $280 is a lot of money to spend on any pair of football boots, let alone from a brand that hasn't really been relevant in the industry for quite some time. However, it's an Italian brand and the boots are made in Italy. So I think people will see value in that. The build quality as a whole does seem to be very, very nice. The second and probably main thing that I think more people will be very upset about though is the fact that this super soft, pretty much as soft as anything leather upper, and it's also a pretty much full leather upper, is only listed as premium leather on the Diodora website, where unlike the original Maximus, which would have featured a kangaroo leather upper, the fact that they have not specified that this is kangaroo leather almost guarantees that it is in fact some form of calfskin. Where like I've talked about so many times before, the type of leather is far less important than the overall quality. And the quality of this leather is top notch, pretty much as good as anything. I'd even go as far as to say that it gets to the same quality standard as perhaps a made in Japan Mizuno kangaroo leather upper. It just feels really, really good. However, unlike most leather boots these days that tend to trend on the thinner side of things, this is a very padded leather upper. So if you like that more padded, dare I say substantial feel on the ball, this is pretty much as thick as it gets when it comes to a new pair of football boots, which simply put is something that you're either going to absolutely love or completely hate. Where everything that you see in white, basically cutting off right here, running all the way through the midfoot, forefoot, toe box area, then cutting off at the same point on the opposite side 
is that soft premium leather. The same thing goes for the standalone tongue and the fold over flap. So from a touch perspective, it's extremely consistent. I also really like the fact that the entire liner on the inside is this soft microfiber material, which has a great feel against your foot. Out of the box comfort is very good. However, given that it is such a soft leather material, they do require a little bit of break in time to stretch. And as a reinforcement, you'll notice what is a pretty unique stitching pattern across the entire upper. It's not really reinforced in any other way other than the structure that you do get from that microfiber liner. But I did find that after a little bit of wear time, the boot stretches in all the right spots without overstretching, which I think is definitely something that can be a little bit tricky when you go for a leather upper that is as soft and pliable as this one is, but they seem to have struck a nice balance here with the overall design. From a touch perspective in terms of grip on the ball, because that's become such a big thing in football boots these days, it's pretty much a smooth leather finish across the entire foot. Other than this area right here in the forefoot, as well as part of the midfoot, where you can see there's this kind of glossy finish added to the surface. It's a little bit grippy on the ball when it's dry. It ends up being kind of slick on the ball when it's a little bit wet. And overall, as far as added grip elements go, I didn't really find it to be all that useful at all. So for the most part, the touch on the ball is pretty much just straight padded leather all the way through with everything in the heel area that you see here in gold and orange being made from a synthetic material, which ultimately is a part of the foot that isn't really impacted all that much when it comes to touch. If you really like a padded leather feel, the only two boots that would even come close to this right now that are readily available would be something like a classic Copa Mundial, which is gonna be a lot more old school in terms of fit and feel compared to these, or the Adidas Copa Icon, which I think just feels bulky without the ball feel part. So compared to those, I think this is a much better option. The laces, as you can see, run mostly down the middle. They're maybe pushed slightly to the lateral side, but not much. And it does feature a standard U-throat standalone tongue construction, which I'm personally a big fan of. You get this little mini flap held down by some Velcro, which does actually stay in place. Something that's really nice to see because so many fold over flaps with the Velcro don't actually hold the tongue down very effectively. And typical of Diodora, the laces are about five miles long, meaning that when it comes to wearing these boots, you effectively have two options. Option number one being that you have to wrap the laces underneath and then tie them up, which is a very old school thing to do. We haven't had to do that on football boots in quite some time. Again, the only other boot that's gonna come with laces that long is going to be that classic Copa Mundial. And then option number two is just to swap the laces out for much shorter ones and not have to deal with all the extra slack. Moving to the rear, you're going to find what is a low cut construction with a little bit of an extended tail. This is an area of the boot where I think some of the finishing maybe isn't the best. And I think that's more so down to the materials used. This kind of faux carbon fiber synthetic doesn't exactly fold in the nicest way around the edges of this opening, which I just think looks a little bit cheap, but ultimately you don't feel when playing in the boots. You have an internal plastic heel counter that is extremely solid at the back, something that I'm a big fan of. And then the heel liner features plenty of padding, has a nice contoured shape, and is lined in this soft microfiber that overall feels comfortable, holds your heel in place really nicely. And generally, I just don't have much to complain about here. Then the insole fully removable, I'll give you guys a quick look at that. It features a very standard mesh liner on top, and it's made from a relatively simple white foam that's definitely on the thinner side with an even thinner yellow foam insert under the heel as well as the forefoot. So it's technically two layers of foam, but certainly nothing special, again, especially considering the price tag. Moving to the base, you're going to find a sole plate and stud pattern that is very Diodora, which I realize you might look at this and say to yourself, I've seen this a hundred times before, but this is signature Diodora. It's been around like this for quite some time, where the sole plate itself is actually a dual density p backs construction that despite this definitely coming across as more of an old school boot, is incredibly responsive. This has some really nice spring back to it, if that's something that you're after, which again, kind of makes this a very unique 
combination of features that you really won't find from anything else. It flexes nicely with your foot, but again, doesn't feel flimsy or super soft underfoot, which I think is something that a lot of people don't love about old school football boots. Also, the three rivets connecting the sole plate and the upper is something that we just don't see anymore. So again, from a build quality perspective, you do get what you pay for. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, this is what they call their Rotax 2.0 layout, implying that it prioritizes rotational movements and because of the conical studs, you can definitely feel that. You'll also find that compared to a lot of boots, the sole plate width is maybe a little bit wider than average, which really makes this feel super stable underfoot, where despite the more traditional shaping to the studs, I really do find this to provide a nice amount of bite and be more on the aggressive side. If I had to compare the feel of this sole plate and stud pattern to any other football boot out there, it actually reminds me a lot of a made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 4 Beta, which is a very good comparison to make. And again, despite not looking like anything fancy, this is a fantastic FG sole plate and stud pattern. And then there's the weight, where I think based on just the way that these look, most people would anticipate them feeling like bricks on your feet, but that is not actually the case. In a size 9.5 US, you can see that the Maximus weighs in at 9.3 ounces, the equivalent of 264 grams. Which by modern top end football boot standards obviously isn't overly impressive. If you're comparing this to a top end speed boot these days, they're about 60 grams heavier. And if you're comparing them to something like a Copa Pure 2 Plus, you're gonna find that those are gonna weigh in at about 30 grams lighter than these. So these kind of fall into their own unique window as far as weight is concerned, where they're not heavy and they're not light. And I think for the vast majority of people that are actually interested in a boot like this, the weight probably isn't that much of a concern, but if it is a little bit of a worry for you, just know that these don't feel heavy on your feet whatsoever. On feet, there's no doubt about it, these boots have some chunk, where simply put, they are not going to be for everybody. If you like a super thin, streamlined, sprinter spike type of football boot in terms of feel, these are pretty much the exact opposite of that. Not to say that they don't fit well, because I think the shape that they've gone for, despite the way that they look, actually has a lower volume profile than I was honestly expecting that is kind of necessary when you're talking about having an upper with leather as soft as this one does. It stretches and forms to your feet, so you need them to fit really tight out of the box. But once broken in, given how soft the leather is and how padded it feels on your feet, it does not feel like you're wearing something low profile. These have some substance to them, which again, is totally a matter of personal preference and kind of the opposite of what you're gonna find from the vast majority of football boots that are currently available, which is why this is very much an acquired taste in 2024, which you probably didn't need me to tell you given that they're $280. From a fit and comfort perspective, Obviously the leather is super soft. Again, a little bit tighter out of the box than I was expecting, but after some wear time, the leather stretches really nicely and forms to the exact shape of your foot. The entire inside of the boot is lined in this really soft microfiber material, which feels super comfortable. And honestly, there really isn't much to complain about here when you're talking about just having a comfortable feel. Soft leather is usually a recipe for comfort. From a width perspective, they have some decent width to them all the way through, especially with that more traditional U-throat construction. So if you did have wider feet, I think these are gonna work well after a little bit of wear time. The volume aspect, again, is something that you need to be aware of. You need them to fit tight given how much this leather is going to stretch. So as long as you don't need a ton of extra volume, I do think these will work well for most foot types. And as far as sizing is concerned, they run relatively snug in length because of how low the toe box is from right out of the box. But again, I would personally recommend going true to size as I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and have them be that little bit tighter out of the box because again, the leather is just that soft. It's going to stretch after some wear time. And the biggest mistake you could make with a football boot like this is buying them too big so they're comfortable out of the box. But then as you wear them in, the leather overstretches and you end up with something that feels too sloppy. The tighter, the better out of the box, I would say. So for the vast majority of people, I would personally recommend going true to size in order to have the best possible fit 
after you've broken the boots in. So in conclusion, and perhaps somewhat surprisingly, I'm actually impressed with the Made in Italy Diodora Maximus. Well, I'll say right off the bat, very bluntly, these are not for everybody. In fact, I think these are actually for very few people. The vast majority, if they were to try them, probably wouldn't like them very much, just given how padded the upper actually is. But if you grew up in the 90s or wore Diodora Maximuses in the mid 2000s and you really liked how those football boots felt, this gives you some of those feels in a package that doesn't feel like it's from 2006. They're definitely old school, but they definitely still have some modern appeal as well. For $280, I really feel like you have to want these specific football boots because for me personally, if I just wanted the best quality leather boots for that amount of money, there's no way I'm picking these over a Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia 2. That to me is the gold standard for leather boots. These unfortunately do not beat them. However, there is a non Made in Italy elite variation of this boot that looks to slim down the design a little bit, giving it a one piece upper that I really do look forward to trying. Those have a retail price of $220 and I think could potentially be a little bit of a sleeper in the world of football boots in 2024. Let me know if that's a review you guys would like to see.